Do you need a quick clear guide to assessing the ankle? Well, in today's video, I'm going to walk you through the key ligaments, bony landmarks, and assessment methods used in sports massage so you can build confidence and accuracy in your treatments. When it comes to sports massage, there's going to be situations where you're going to need to assess your client's ankle. So the ankle itself plays key roles when it comes to stabilization and mobility and can be highly prone to injury. So it's important for us to be able to identify if there's potential injuries and we do that through assessing the ankle. Okay, so we're going to look at some of the actual bony landmarks and the structure of the ankle now. So just coming down here, you've got the fibula itself, and then you've got the lateral malleolus, so the actual ankle bone itself. So that's going to be one of the key kind of bony landmarks we're going to be using with sports massage. Just underneath, you've got the talus itself, and just at the top here, you've got the talodome. And then just underneath, you've got the calcaneus, which is the heel bone itself. Okay, so looking at some of the ligaments now. So I've done these just in pink here, just to make them a little bit easier to see. At the front here, what we have, just attaching from the talus onto the fibula, we've got the anterior talofibular ligament. And then just around the back here, you're gonna have the posterior talo ligament. And then right on here, all the way down now onto the calcaneus, you're going to have the calcaneofibular ligament. Okay, moving to the medial side now. One of the things I want to highlight whilst we're here is you've now got the medial malleolus. So this again is going to be the ankle, but from the inside of the foot, so the medial side. And then what you've got now is the three deltoid ligaments. So Deltoid, obviously don't get confused with obviously the muscle in the shoulder. In Latin, deltoid just means triangular. So it just means the ligaments here go in a triangular motion. And at the back here, we have got the Achilles tendon. So just going back now to these deltoid ligaments. So deltoid in Latin means triangular. So not to obviously get confused with the shoulder muscle. It just means that it's a triangular shape set of ligaments. So going through these individually now, just at the back here, we have the tibiotella. In the middle, we have the tibiocalcanean, and then we have the tibionavicular ligament just coming down here. Just while we've got our client in this position as well, let's look at the arches as well. So from the medial side, so from the inside of the foot now, we refer to this as the medial longitudinal arch. On the outside of the foot now, this arch is now going to be referred to as the lateral longitudinal arch. And if we're looking at it from underneath the foot now, so the one kind of spanning all the way across, this is now just going to be referred to as the transverse arch of the foot. Okay, so with any joint assessment now, we're going to take the client for a series of tests, and that's going to be your active, your passive, and your resisted tests. And one of the ones I want to start with here is going to be the active test. So this is when you're gonna get the client to move the joints themselves. So if I can get you just to kind of raise those feet up into dorsiflexion, down into plantar flexion, it might be that you ask them to kind of circumduct and rotate those around, you might want to invert, you might want to get them to evert. It just depends on what it is that you're assessing, what the client has reported the pain as. But when it comes to these active tests, all we're looking at is the joint and the muscles, natural movement and what their capability is. We're looking to see if it brings about any kind of pain, but it could even be that you're looking to just assess the natural coordination of the joints themselves. Looking at the passive movements now. So what this is actually allowing us to do is assess the mobility of what the ankle actually has, but it allows us to see how the muscles respond without the client engaging them. So it's key with this one that you get the client to fully relax and allow it to go soft so we can take it through those natural patterns those natural movements without any interference from the client. But what this is also gonna allow us to do is test that joint end feel as well. And stay tuned for this one because we are going to be going into joint end feel in a little bit more detail in a few minutes. Now if we're looking to kind of take the client through a resisted test, what we're actually going to be doing here is, for example, if I just get you to just kind of hold that position for me, 
what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push against the client, but what I want them to do is hold the natural position. So try and keep it at this angle for me. I don't, I don't want it to kind of come up or down anymore, but I'm gonna apply pressure against you. And by doing this, what we're highlighting is if there's any pain in that area, but it also allows us to see the strength that the client has currently got. So you would do this and you would compare both sides. So for example, if they've come in with a problem just on one ankle, you would be able to identify if there is differences in strength and whether or not the pain is present from you applying that force. Could be we're gonna do this the other way around now. So again, I want you to hold that kind of 90 degree angle for me. I'm now going to apply pressure down. And again, you can do this through a variety of things. You might want to do it through inversion, eversion, just depends on what you think the problem is. Okay, so we're going to go back and start looking at joint end fill now. So a couple of things we need to understand is that when moving a joint to its limit, you're going to fill different types of end fill, depending on what's stopping it. So you can have normal end fills, which help confirm that the joint is functioning as expected and can include bone to bone, which feels hard and abrupt like elbow extension. You can have capsular, which feels leathery due to tight ligaments and joint capsule. You've got firm, which is similar to capsular, but caused by tight muscles or tendons. And then you've got tissue approximation, which feels soft as muscle meets muscle like knee flexion. But then you've got your abnormal end fills, which suggests something is wrong, such as an injury, a dysfunction, something that might need medical referral. And that can be what we call spongy block, which feels soft and springy with pain, often from internal damage like torn cartilage. You've got empty, which is movement that stops due to sharp pain caused by serious injury or inflammation, or it could be muscle spasm, which is painful and limited movement due to the muscle tightening, which may feel like a block. So why does it matter? Well, knowing the difference between normal and abnormal end fill helps you spot injuries, avoids causing harm, and tailors your treatment effectively. Normal end fill confirms safe, healthy movement, whereas abnormal ones warn you to stop and assess further before continuing. And that is a wrap on today's video on the ankle. But stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to be looking at the structures of the knee, everything from those bony landmarks to your active, your passive, your resisted testing, but also the ligament structure there as well. So as always, if you've enjoyed today's content, like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.